in the 70s, board games and improv theater had a baby, and it was called the role-playing game. These games allowed a generation of kids to live out their dreams of slaying dragons and saving kingdoms, all while sitting in their bedrooms and basements. Today, gaming has moved into the cultural mainstream, and role-playing games are back with a vengeance. Join us now as five of these former kids come out of the basement and onto the internet to experience adventure, mystery, and obscure pop culture references. It's time for Roll for Combat. Hey there, welcome to Roll for Combat. I'm your GM and host, Stephen Glicker. And in this week's show, the boys continue the combat that started last week, in which they started by healing the bad guys. Find out this week if they're going to heal more damage than they dish out. Also this week, my GM tip is how to make any PC shine nice and easy. So this is it. This is the home stretch. We're only one week away from Gen Con, one week away from the Pathfinder playtest getting released. It's going to be a torrid tsunami of Pathfinder and Paizo and Starfinder and just tons of stuff going on in the role-playing world. It's a very exciting time. For those of you who are actually interested in doing some Pathfinder playtest, head over to the Discord channel, just discord.rollforcombat.com. We're actually setting up games right now. Some will be played by post, some will be live, and they're going to do everything from Doomsday Dawn to some of the new Pathfinder Playtest Society games, a little bit of everything. We'll find out more next week when everything's actually released for free. Also next week, look on the site. The same day that the Pathfinder playtest rules are being released, we have a long, extensive review getting posted the exact same day, August 2nd. So first thing, August 2nd, midnight, that thing is going up. It is long, it is detailed, and I think you're all going to like it. We're also planning on doing a special show where it's just me and the boys discussing Pathfinder playtests and what we think of the rules. Now again, this is a Starfinder podcast, but it's not very often that a brand new game, especially one of the Pathfinder variety, comes out, so we have to bend the rules here. We actually started out playing Pathfinder, obviously, and moved over to Starfinder because, well, to be honest, we kind of got a little sick and tired of Pathfinder. We needed something new, and now we got something new new. We have new Pathfinder, and we're definitely going to at least try it out play test it a bit, record some of those sessions, and pop them on the channel. So you get to hear that. Although, don't worry, we're still going to concentrate on Starfinder. That right now is our single love. And the Pathfinder playtest is going to be fairly all over the place. There is going to be Doomsday Dawn, which has seven adventures. But they're everything from, like, level 1 to, like, level 20. So there's sort of these weird mini-adventures that are designed to test the game out. It's not, like, one long adventure. And we're kind of more into long adventures. But don't worry, we're actually going to come up with some characters. And from what I can hear, it looks like they're going to be doing nearly all spellcasts. It's the exact opposite of what we're doing with Starfinder. So look for that in the next few weeks. It's going to be very exciting. We're going to have a ton of stuff going up on the site. A ton of Starfinder stuff, a ton of Pathfinder stuff. It's just going to be, well, tons of stuff. You name it, it's going to be on the site. But with that, let's get into the show. So last we left off, you guys approached the temple where there was the undead elf guardian who you tried to trick, which did not go very well. And then you ended up getting your ass handed to you big time once he started to fight. And you ran away valiantly like little, little babies. And smartly managed to scurry up the side of the building in which you almost fell down a few times back into him, and then he would have killed you. But you managed to catch yourself. And then there was like a little observation tower all the way to tippy-tippy top. You went through that. And right now, let's see, Mo, Cheddar, Rusty, and Tuttle are in the observation tower. And then Mr. Hiroji snuck down into some inner sanctum where there was these Lord Guardian statues that were chasing him but then he ran up the stairs and then he snuck back down since it is complete darkness and he's been throwing goblin grenade after goblin grenade 
at the Lore Guardians, and he finally managed to catch their attention. I think he threw like six before they knew what was going on because they are constructs and not very smart and it's pitch black. So, and you're hiding behind the staircase. So you're able to keep throwing them without them knowing what the heck was going on. Plus one of them healed them. So they're probably thought, Hey, uh, someone's helping us out. And now they spotted you and combat has started. And that's where we last left off is combat started with Mo is up and he's way up at the top. Now, just a picture of this. They spotted you. Mo is over a hundred feet up in the air from a spiral staircase, and Hiroji's at the base of the stairs, kind of hidden, so they can't really see you. So, have they Mo detected him yet? Yeah, they they sort of looked at him and saw him and started to walk towards him. Like Hiroji saw that they were like in the darkness. He saw that the, they're coming after him. So. We're technically in combat, but Mo, Cheddar, Tuttle, and Rusty are so far up. I'm not sure how you're going to handle this. And Chris, if you recall, the strategy we talked about was lure them upstairs so that only one of them can actually be there. Yeah. And we block them, and we can literally the, the kill box. Put them in the right, kill box. Right. Here, let let box. me use my character to show you where the kill box is. Bob Marquis is playing the human envoy, Rusty Carter. Uh, two to the left of Mo is the spot where the monster should be, while we all stand around and shooting at it. Yep. Chris Beamer is playing the Lashunta operative, Hiroji. Ding dong. John Statz is playing the Vesk soldier, Mo Dupinski. I guess I'm going to delay my action until one of these. So what are you going to do, Mo? You heard probably through the comms, they're coming to get me, Barbara. Yep. yep. Yeah. Um, well, I do alert them with the comms. On my I turn. say, yeah, if you're lure, if you're gonna lure them to the top, then I'm not gonna run down. I'm gonna wait for them to come up. So that's the plan. I go to ready my action for one of these guys to uh, come up the stairs within my melee range and whop them one. The combo of Tuttle and Cheddar are up. Um, I mean, I'm gonna draw my weapon and kind of get everybody into position, but beyond that, I don't know that I have a lot to do yet. Jason McDonald is playing the Ahsoki mechanic Tuttle Blacktail and his drone, Cheddar. Okay, are you going to move or anything, or are you just going to hang up there? Oh, he's moving. He's moving. Cheddar. Cheddar's all banged up. Oh, Cheddar is banged Hiroji, up. Hiroji, did you do uh, an identify on these guys? He did. He did. Are these, are they undead as well? No, um, it's been so long, but they were lore guardians. They're magical constructs. They had a tactical spears that they were that they can use. They obviously can see in the dark and everything because, well, they're constructs yeah. or at least low light vision or dark vision of some sort. But no resistances or immunities or vulnerabilities. Oh, there could be very much. They have construct. Immunity, so like fort saves poison, all that stuff is you know completely ignored. They, I believe, you found that they weren't that tough. That they were, I mean, there there are statues, so they definitely yeah. have. Uh, they take a bit of they're damage. They're solid. Yeah, they're solid. But those grenades also didn't really do a lot. You did a lot, and then you like completely healed it, if you remember. So. Mm. Hiroji, you're yeah. up. Okay, so how many goblin grenades do I have left? That's a good question. Let's see. I kind of, I kind of want to get rid of them because, like, they can heal the enemy. So that's, we don't like that as an option. Yeah, and they're fun. This is not a critical combat. I like this. I, I would like to use them because they're fun, not because you know they are fun. They are okay. Well, there was the where is the one that's attached to the detonator device that's on the stairs? Oh right, I forgot about that. You good? Okay. Yes, you put one at the bias of the stairs that you were going to set right. Off. So I know that they are coming towards me, so I am going to then move up the stairs and my full move. As part of my move action, I pull out the detonator, and uh, I guess I'll do a double move up. Um, actually, hold on. Haven't you already placed the detonator? Yeah, no, but you have to, yeah, like, pre yeah, you have yeah. to like press the button, though, right? Is that, is that an action? I think you've already done all that, though. Yeah. No, no, but the detonator is like I press the button and it explodes. Yeah, what he did is the I detonator works control. a lot of different ways. But the way he set it up is he put 
the grenade there with the detonator, and then you can press a button and it blows up. Right. So I'll move. I'll move thirty feet. I'll use move my maximum forty feet up, and then I'll I'll uh, ready an action that when I hear them in where I think they'll be within range of that, I'll detonate the bomb. Okay. I mean, it's probably right right after their first move increment. Yeah, right. You basically programmed it. It takes like one minute, and you can choose a triggering method. And but what are the choices for triggering methods? Well, you already said it, which is you can either set it like let's see proximity. Yeah, you can either simple press of the button, which is no action, a four-digit command code, a move action, a complex input method such as scanning your retina or thumbprint, which is a full action. Um, oh, wow, cool. it's no action. To That's press good. The no action. All right, so then. But I still have to... You kind of got to be near there. If you're going to go up a spiral staircase 60 feet... I don't think well, I'm going up know. 40 only. And then I'll... I'll say I'll, that's about I'll, the... Okay, I'll stay yeah. there and listen, and then when I hear them like there, boom, I click the button. All right, so 40 feet. You got it. Wallhals is... Oh, where is Wallhals? All right, he, you left him Outside, behind. Right? He's yeah. not even up here. Yeah, he, you left him back at the... No, he's hiding. He's He's like all the way... He was up there with you. And he's like all the way in the corner hiding, and he's just not going to do anything. And then the lore guardian will go. So one goes, and he moves, let's say, towards the stairs. So one is moving towards the stair and starting to walk up the stair. Are you going to do it now, or are you going to wait for the other one? No, I want to wait. All right, well, this one is up. This one's going to go... Uh, <laughs> He's right next to you. Oh well, that's not what I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> well, that he part could, of the plan. well, he gets all the way up, and he's right next to you. He can't attack you, but he's literally standing what next to you. Move? He moves forty feet. Eighty well, feet? No, he's he moved double. thirty. He did a double move, and then he moved sixty. So yeah, he moved sixty feet. Well, so. I was more than six. I had to be more than sixty feet away. From no, me. you only move forty feet straight up. And you actually were exactly 5, 10, 15, 20. You were, you were, yes, you're right. You're 65 feet away. He moves 60 feet. He's right next to you. So he's five. Uh, there's, a, there's a space. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. He's like right there. I mean, it makes a big difference. And now the other. I know. I know. It's like he's, but he is next to you on the staircase. And then the other one goes. All right. Well, this one I can't try and catch in the grenade. This one, has, this one is farther away. So it took him much longer. So he, yeah, you can blow it up now and get him. All right, so what does it do exactly? <laughs> you can't, you can't you, get both of them? You no, know, because the other one rolled. Uh, they don't go at the exact same time. One was very close to him, and then one was further away. So the one that was close actually got right next to Hiroji, and the one that's further away slowly got up, ah. and now you're going to set it off. So just well, really right next to it. Yeah, he's right next to you. Ten feet he's, away. He's, no, he's 35 feet up. You're 40 feet up. Okay, so... All right, so what time, what do I roll for damage? One D one hundred to see what happens. Oh, when you right, blow up right, 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 The grenade. Right. You press the button. What happens? Uh-oh. Sixteen frag frag grenade. That's it. Okay. Uh, give me a one D six. Oh, he fails his reflex. Maybe he rolled an mm. eleven. He Let's rolls a two for a s- two damage. Right. Two damage. So two damage. Oh, great. Uh, These grenades are like. Like firecrackers. <laughs> they really are. You have no I, idea what happened. I'm sure there's some number that does massive damage. It's just out of a D100. It may only be 100. You got mm-hmm. the you got the shock grenade too. You just haven't gotten just like it, it's done a couple of things. Like you rolled that 100. Oh boy, that's a good one. Or the 95 to 99s. You also got them a long time ago. So. Yeah, no, I'm just saying in general. Like Mark One grenades in general are fairly weak. All right, so. One of them's 35 feet up, one's 25 feet up, and one's right next to you, one's 15 feet down from you. Rusty's up. Yay. They're coming! I say into the comms, hey, you're supposed to be up here. Where are you? All right, guys, he might be dead now. Oh, do you do anything? Um, oh, no, I'm also moving. Hold on. Oh, you're going to move? Okay. Uh, that, was, that, was my, that was my snark action. Now yeah. I'm doing my actual stand <laughs> I I am moving to uh, the... Well, I'm trying to be basically at the place that's the landing over the stairs to fire down into it. What I want to know is basically if something from that space, which is two steps down the stairs, could it reach up and attack me from there? If it was a humanoid-sized creature. No. 
I love that spot. I have now two guns. I'm going to have my arc pistol in one hand and my physical piercing damage uh, pistol in the other. Do you want me to show you a good place where you could be? Actually, even better. There. If you go right there, you can fire right down on them and they can't reach you. No cover. It's shooting fish and umbrella. Is that the idea? Yeah. Yeah. You're shooting right, right. down. Okay. Well, that was basically where I was going for. Cool. You're mm -hmm. readying an action. I am readying an action to yeah, shoot them, uh, shoot something that doesn't have antennas on it. Yes. You I don't have antennas because I'm an elf. Uh, oh, boom. Uh, Mo is also gonna. He's going to. He's going to hold, and he's readying an action for them to get within ten feet. Hold the line. Of his yes. Wait for it. I'm since most of the effects so far have been positive, like buff type things. I'm gonna hit the button and see what happens to Chuck. Nice. What? I know, so early in a fight. Da, 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 da. Well, and also there's that heal, which would be kind of nice. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit the button. Red button activated. He explodes. <laughs> so I need to give you what a D12. It's been a little while. Uh, I actually had to find the sheet. It's been so long. I think it's um, a D10. It's a D10 for unpredictable goblin tech. Okay, D10, sorry. Seven Ooh, is a good a one. one. That's, that's a new a good one. one. Seven. Oh, boy. This one's going to be a pain, but... Chainsaw Dervish right into Mo. Kind of. Unlikely holdout weapon. Cheddar gains a special melee combat arm that deploys armed with a two-handed advanced weapon. Of its choice, whose level is equal to or less than of the drone. Cheddar is proficient with this weapon, and you also gain weapon specialization with this weapon. So, you get a level 4 weapon, two-handed advanced, which is perfect. So, you get a little bit of time to look through the tables while the creatures charge up the stairs. So, the, in addition, what will happen is... The weapon is fragile and will disintegrate after a minute. But for now, you're in good shape. That's ten rounds. That's great. Nice. Chris, get up here so we can kill what the goddamn thing. Doing? You actually can withdraw and not take an attack. Or you could attack the one next to you. It's up to you. <laughs> I know. Yes, I'm going to withdraw full double moves. That's 80 feet. It's a good thing I'm faster than that. I'm like, yeah. I'm heading, I'm heading up. Get ready. <laughs> Okay, I see something. I shoot. I shoot. I shoot. <laughs> no, yep. She, you see, you shoot see him now. Hiroshi shoot him running now. Through. Oh, oh, it's Hiroji. God damn. No, I really, sh no I really overreacted I there. Oh, Do I still have more move? It's duck season. Uh, if you have eighty, you got twenty movement left, so you're fine. Oh, Where sweet. Do you go. You got, yeah, you got tons of movement. All right, so I'll I'll move there. I guess that's the same kind of spot where I can shoot down at it, right? Yeah, you basically have to go through Mo and then pop, and then, yeah, there you, you're popping and locking, right? You guys are all, you have a kill box. You got a perfect kill box. And I can pull my yeah. weapon out, too, right? My my arc pistol? Yeah. Sure. I do so. Will Hulse is like, nothing. He's, he's, finally, he's finally quiet. Maybe he died. Do we hear any statues coming up the stairs? We hear the orchestra going, dum, 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 dum. Yeah, that's exactly what I mean. Yes, yeah. I want the Chuck Jones going up the stairs. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yes, you actually see one of the statues right there. It goes into your perfect kill box, and, well, there it is. So I guess your things go off. I will start with my uh, arc pistol, and we're going to work our way through weapons to see what it's immune to after that. But we'll start with electricity. All right, you go now. Oh, he shoots. He hits. 18 for 23. He does... So, hmm. He rolls a 1 on a d6. Or I rolled a maximum, and it has a dr5 electricity. Well, I'm going to tell you what you rolled. You rolled a 5 and did 3 points of damage. Oh, wow. Okay, so... I rolled oh, a five. I have plus two, so it's it reduced that damage. No, no, no. Sorry, half. the total. Yeah. Sorry, you rolled a total of five. Not oh, a, okay. Yes, a total Got of five and did Thank a total you. of three damage. Okay, so it it managed to reduce two of it. Great. Who's up next? All right, uh, Rusty. Did you have another attack? 
No, well, no, not for a ready action. Go. Can't do a full not round. Not for a ready action. You can't do full. Oh, action. that's right. It's impossible. Oh. Uh, uh, but actually, Cheddar, of course, had a ready, I think, which is what... Well, uh, Mo Jason's had saying. one, and then Cheddar oh, yeah. will go. All right. Oh, Mo's going with his pike. Wow. Yeah, you rolled... <laughs> what did you hit with? You rolled a 9 and hit with a 19. You did... S you rolled 18 points of damage and did 16 points of damage, so... I can live with that. Mo, we yeah. did 19 points of damage. Good for us. That is awesome. We are a team. Pop. You're done. Yep. Um. Oh, was Cheddar gonna go into kind of like a kill box position, Jason, and ready? Because we didn't. Uh, what far. he put into the chat is that Cheddar's going for the tactical pike because it has reach. No, I know. Well, that. Yeah, I can't push. Well, but I couldn't move him and push the button in the same turn. So not this turn. Right. Right. Oh. Right. Okay. So the lore guardian. Away. The lore guardian is there and just got hit twice and well that's it nothing else happened and then the other one is right behind him i'm just putting him there but he's like he's he's actually right behind them boy that that guardian's got to be so angry with that electricity okay. on him the guardian's actually not there the guardian you can't see yet the guardian's actually two away uh no cheddar can't attack because it's also five downs oh i see okay doesn't matter because Tuttle's up now. Anyhow, so it's off or not. Okay, if I move, I'm going to try to move to this opposite corner. Do I have a shot from there? Yes. Okay. Um, I, I believe the pike does 1d10, right? No, I think it's 1d8. And, uh, it's... I just picked it because it has reach, which seemed practical. I'll tell you in a second. It's been a while. It's uh, 1d8. Yeah, 1d8. Um, you also get a plus one, guys, if you're using ranged weapons because Mo is engaged with uh, his uh, pike. Melee oh, weapon. cool. I, we're also firing down. I don't know if we get a bonus. I know from melee yeah. you do. No. Oh, well. You actually, I don't know if that's, that's Pathfinder. I don't know if that's. Yeah, that was Pathfinder, wasn't it? It was actually even, yeah. as I'm thinking about it, that was like the rule for mounted. Like you can, you're, you're. It was very Pathfinder. Yeah, I, was, I, I, was, that I withdraw that. I apologize. Cheddar is now up. Oh, Cheddar. Oh my God. This poor, this poor Lord Guardian. You guys are all surrounding it. This isn't fair. Oh, Cheddar, Cheddar for gets the a kill. kill. <laughs> Cheddar <laughs> impales it with the improvised weapon, the improvised pike. Excellent. <laughs> oh, Cheddar. If Cheddar could joy and say happiness, he would. Code word spear fishing. Hiroji's up. That went down much easier than I expected. Hiroji, what are you, you're up. All right, let me engage my trick. Is it dead? Yeah, you, there's nothing to see. It's dead. It's already gone. Yeah, we didn't get the skull on our our screen. Just so I know. moved it off. I moved it out of the okay. way because you guys are. It's it died, and then I moved it off almost instantly because it's out of the way. The other one is still 15 feet down, so you're gonna have to wait before it comes. All up. right, no, I pull out a I pull out a goblin grenade and I throw it down there. All right, we'll do tink, a tink tink do it to hit. Okay, because you could slip and hit Cheddar. D 100. Mm. No, no, no. First he has to hit, then D 100. You can't. This is easy to do. All I'm doing is throwing a grenade down some stairs. It's like, oh, I can... Yeah. yeah, you would think oh, yeah. so, but anything can happen. I mean, I have rolled a one before. Yeah, exactly. A one is anything an issue. Anything can happen. Or a two. If you rolled a one, two... Actually, a one through six and you miss. Or no, one through five and you miss. So, you hit... They had a 25% chance to miss. So, 1d100. Oops, hold on. Uh, oh. oh, that's a two. I see a two. Oh, we rolled a four. <laughs> you rolled a four on a D100. A four on a D100. You not only healed it, you just actually leveled This is the it. best it's gonna part. It's going to go up in levels, and it's going to come rolled, up and kill us. This is the best part. You rolled a 1D8, or you rolled a two. Then you rolled a 1D100, and you rolled a four. And guess what? It's the same effect. That is the Starfinder gods getting you right there. That is the proof of the gods. Give me a 1d8. Three. You and it. you healed him. Good job. Wow, these goblins, man. They sure know how to make good tech. Rusty. Actually, it's <laughs> AoE up. healing. If they could actually just master that, that would oh. be extraordinarily are, useful. Are we no. in the range of that heal? No. It's down the stairs. It's down the stairs, and it doesn't go around oh, the rats. All right, so since I don't see it yet, I'm going to... 
you know what? I'm not going to ready an action this time. I'm going to hold my action until after the lore guardian. I want to make a double attack this round. No, I'm not. No, that's silly. I ready an action for when I see it. And I'll Thank shoot you. it then. Thank you. Uh, same, you know, second verse, same as the first. Uh, Thank God for Mo. Yeah, we're going to ready an action. It's going to actually do damage. Hey, I did damage. Okay, oh, no. you see it. It's there. It's it's in the same spot as last time. Who's going Kill first? Kill box. Let's heal she it. First goes some more. First. Uh, probably Rusty. Some more. First I'm rusty. going. I'm excited. Rusty, you go. You you go, girl. Oh, look at that. I'm, I'm using physical damage, not electricity. You're using your pistol. He has two pistols. Yeah. I have an arc pistol. I've got my uh, my bullet, bullet pistol. Whoa! 16 Six damage. Six damage. Six damage. For eight, but does six points of damage because it obviously has a little bit of DR. Good job. All right. Now Mo goes. Mr. Mo. Not only have I done no damage, I've actually done negative damage. That's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, <laughs> you have you actually have healed them twice. You this is this is the best worst you've ever done in the history of you fighting. See, you seem like you're playing for the other team on this one. There's oh, no. a question. Do, do heals actually apply to constructs though? For this it does because the goblin grenades have tech. And that's true, and they is, are construct grenades practically. You know, yeah, it, it patched it, it up. Literally, it patched it, it up. Little <laughs> Those yeah. little nanites. Nanite stuff. Totally yeah, accept that. That's yeah, a very yeah. good answer. Ugh. Oh, nice. Well, yeah. Thank God for my yeah. ah, cheddar. Oh, we killed this one too. That's great. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I love how Rusty does like a scratch, and then Mo and Cheddar come around and just utterly annihilate the thing. Yeah, I, well, I basically critted. So Mo crits uh, for um, thirty twenty six damage. Twenty six wow. damage. Yeah. Huge. Yeah, twenty eight. I Minus think this two. is uh, a little bit uh, uh, broken. <laughs> I'm playing a Blood Rager right now. Well, that well, that was a uh, crit. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think crit. we're gonna find out exactly how not broken this all is. Well, yeah. Well, the Lord Guardians are weak. Anyhow, go go fight go fight the undead elf again and see how that goes. How'd that go oh, for no. you the first time? I got all I feel red like the first time. We might have hubris now. I think we might yeah. go for it. Uh we searched him. You searched the guardians. Oh yes, for yep. their treasure sure. that they're carrying. Did we find some stone on their stoneness? This, this, the lore guardians are statues made of stone. Gems for eyes. Their weapons were made of stone. You do find bits and pieces of moss and leaves that have grown on them over the years. That's a Otherwise, trophy. you find nothing else. I take right. a trophy. Yeah. I take off. I I crack off a finger and keep oh, it as a trophy. Yes. You you get a rock. I, I don't think you get a trophy yeah, since you, you healed you, them. No, no. I want you to take something off of your own equipment. Put it on the guardian. It gets a trophy from yeah. you. Yeah. Or give Mo a trophy. All right. Well, um, after we get the the gems out of their eye sockets, um, I think we should go down those, the stairs. Th those are pebbles. You're forgetting my tactical prowess of luring them up here. That was yeah, that's, that, cool. that's true. I, I will give you credit for that. You did a fine job. Trophy acquired. Only an operative could do that. Exactly. Pretty much. All right. So, so uh, unfortunately, after a minute, Cheddar's awesome spear that was made from random parts and his arm crumbles to dust. Oh, <laughs> really? It just goes away forever. Yeah. 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 It's uh, two two minutes. Once again, it's them goblins. The next time I roll a seven, I guess that's so. pretty much it. It's a good thing. <laughs> um, so Virgie, do you want to sneak ahead again? Yeah, sure. I'll stealth down again. Uh, I assume we have this room. I think we can all just chomp, chomp. Uh, what's your telepathic range in case you need to tell us something feet. silently? Thirty feet. Yeah, I have comms though. Yeah, yeah. well, that's it though. Right. Mo's going to try to do the maneuver where he can jump from the staircase to the other staircase without touching. Are you doing the floor. parkour? You like yeah, parkour? Parkour. Man. parkour. Oh, you. <laughs> you 
<laughs> I'm gonna. I, I, oh God, I'm not even gonna bother making you roll. I I almost want to make you roll to you fall on your face. Acrobatic 16. 16. You fall on your. No, you're fine. Oh, you're fine. You're fine. Your tail goes flying. All right. So you want, guys want to? I say on the comps. Come on down. Of course, it's clear down here. Come on down. Hey. It's uh, dark right. though. It is dark. It's pitch black. For I have infrared sensor, so I can. Hey, see. Uh, Doctor Tuttle, why don't you uh, try to do that jump that I just did? You just need to run all, uh, acrobatics. Uh, yeah, I I had enough jumping fun, almost falling off the roof. So oh. no thanks. All right, it was fun. Is that a wall? I, I don't know things? what you mean about it. It's perfectly bright down here. I can see everything just fine. Okay, so anyone who has, well, actually, anyone who knows this. Who has religion? Is religion a thing? I forgot. Yes, um, I think it is. Mysticism. It? Mysticism. 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 Yeah, it's mysticism now. I have that. I'm kind of in my between Pathfinder, Pathfinder and Story mode. I know. I'm like kind of. In well, yes, I understand. Yeah. That. Actually, I blame the fact that we were at PaizoCon recently. It, it was so much Pathfinder. I blame too. It sort of messed up my brain. A you little. played an inspector. <laughs> I know, Twenty-two. I know. Twenty-two mysticism. Uh, Hiroji once again deduces because he is so smart that mm-hmm. this appears to be a butterfly shaped structure. And this looks like it was a shrine of some sort, probably to Desna. Right. Desna who butterfly. The sign yep. is the butterfly. So, in addition, you can tell that these two, this appears to be kind of. Uh, Wow. This appears to be fairly old compared to what you saw on the outside. Although the the other area and the structure was old, this appears to be ancient, even compared to the rest of the temple. So, once again, if you forgot, because it's been so long, the inside of this structure is filled with physical books and scrolls everywhere. And it looks like they've gone through... And there are a couple like on the floor here and there, but it looks like someone ransacked it. Not ransacked it like a robbery, but sort of ransacked sections of it and sort of took some things out and either hastily put them back or didn't bother. So it looks like parts of it are kind of messy. And this entire room is just filled with books and scrolls. The printed book is a rare thing indeed these days. Uh, who speaks Elvish again? Uh, pretty much everybody now. Alrighty. No. Um, Specifically, Waylos, uh, Hiroji, and myself. Uh, Waylos with us? I thought we left him outside. He's outside. He's, he's outside. He's outside. Yeah, Mo is going to do a dance. Um, he's going to do a jig up here uh, in honor of Desna. Tuttle and his dark vision are going to start looking at the books and see if he can piece together what they were looking for. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of books. This is definitely going to take a while. So you decide if you want to go through the books now or what you want to do. This is going to take at least a couple of hours. So the door to the south appears to be closed and obviously no one's been going through it. And even though you were setting off grenades and such, <laughs> doesn't seem to be out of the ordinary. So you seem to be sort of safe for now. But there is only one obviously exit out of this room. Uh, I don't want to get all AD&D, but I approach the door and I listen at the door. Oh my god. That is such a D&D thing to do. I guess a perception check. What kind of door is it? Is it a metal door? This is the first non-metal door I think we've I got a 20. Had. Hmm. 20. You're going to have to make me look something up. Hold on. I mean, how often does it happen that you actually need to yeah. do this anymore? Yeah, I know. Take your, Get your listens in while you can. Um, the actual dance he's doing is the Mr. Blonde dance. So, just so you guys Mr. Know. Blonde. Oh, yeah, that's a good dance. Yeah. Is this a Vesk tradition to do this? Uh, this is, this is, um, Mo's not a very religious Vesk, but he's, no, he's, he, he recognizes that it's a Desna temple. So, this is his way of, uh, praying is to do a Mr. Blonde dance. Um, I'm going to say you actually hear something. I heard something. Oh, cool. It sounds... Which is good, because Mr. Blonde is about to cut off my ear. Yes. <laughs> it sounds Hello? like a woman mumbling to herself. I step away from the door, and I tell them all this quietly through comms. Hmm. Oh. That's unsettling. That's worth stopping my dance. All right. Um, 
don't. What's up there, Mo? By the way, what's up? Is that just more books and stuff? Um, yeah, there you got appears a desk to be doing a good dance. Yeah, there's like a wooden platform, like five feet off in the air, and again, it's just more books. It's just books. That was probably where the shrine or like the actual praying was done. It looks like this was sort of converted into sort of a library later. So that would have been like where the shrine or the altar for Desna would have been. But now so it's a library. this ransacking this is something that looks recent, right? It looks like these books were recently messed with. Yes. Like someone in here was looking for something specific, it looks like. Yes. Maybe we need the same clue if you left the book behind. Should I give this door? Yeah, it looks like all the uh, doors appear to be, I believe they're made out of stone. Stone? Stone. Oh. Yeah, because it's an old place. Um, I, I am okay with opening that door if you want. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to give it the bum's rush anymore. I thought it was wooden, so. I'll stand there and stealth. Gun out. Arc pistol. And, and in my other hand, I have goblin grenade. <laughs> All right. So let's see. There's a, you guys are in the south of the temple. There's a lot of books. As I said, it's going to take you at least a couple hours to go through these because it's, it's like a library. Tuttle, do you actually start like thumbing through some of the books though first? I'll take a quick glance just to see if there's anything that stands out. Obviously, one thing you did notice is that most of the texts are in Elvish, although some of them appear to be in other languages as well. You know, if hmm. someone's mumbling over there and they did not hear us through. The grenades that we were just lobbing one after another, they're probably not going to care if well, we walk in. Mumbling might just mean crazy, yes. Two yeah. of the languages you don't recognize, Tuttle, but one of them appears to be an extremely archaic version of Castrovellian that's very hard for you to understand. So it yeah. looks like there's four distinct languages, Elvish, Ancient Castrovellian, and two others. Just thumbing through the books, by the way. Yeah, but that's... We could really use way loss. That's a crazy language. Just a lot of gibberish. I speak that language. Do you really? It's, yeah, it's Castrovillian. When you say mumble, I mean, obviously I didn't hear it, but now I'm wondering if it's that's the doctor lady and they left her here because they got what they needed out of her. Mm. That would be a perfectly good... Uh, All right, way maybe she's uh, like ga- Maybe door. she's like tied up or something. Good idea. I so should maybe, investigate. It may be a rescue situation. This might just be an open the door situation if uh, we don't get our uh, operative to uh, move. Well, I'm standing right there. You're the door. You're the guy who opens oh, the door. Oh, I thought you wanted to uh, pick the lock or check it. No, no, no. Like I'm just right. no, no, no. All right, screw it. I'm, I'm just standing there with my gun pointed at it, like ready oh, to go. We're waiting I, for I, each other. We've I have got my two guns plan. drawn. I'm ready. <laughs> I'm covering the yeah, door and I'm ready right. in action to kill anything that charges out of the door to attack us. Yeah, <laughs> to run right to you. I guess face it, hugger. Is it a doorknob? Like, how does this thing open? Well, whatever it is, that's how I open it. I just swing it o- open. You get, like, really? Are you just violently like kicking it open? Well, I'm not like, kicking kind of... it open. However, unless that's the only way to open it. I mean, it's you a, can open it slowly. You can stone door is kind of strange. You can, well, you can smash it open however you want. Uh, slowly. Breach charge. Just open it slowly. This is a nice temple. Execute. You open it slowly. Ooh. As you open the door, the southernmost point of the temple is a hide ceiling sanctuary with tall, narrow columns filled with foggy, discolored glass. The vantage point juts out over the cliff below, overlooking the stairs carved into the mountainside and the ruined settlement below. Basically, this is a huge domed area where there is a stained glass window approximately 60 feet to the south of you. And you saw this coming up. It was very dark and obviously had a lot of grime and grit on it. But you can see because light is like streaming into this. In addition, you see a Kasatha who is on her knees sort of mumbling to herself and looking at carvings and etchings on the floor with her back to you. What do you do? Uh, Mo's going to walk in. And I look at Dr. Tuttle and I give him the thumbs up, hey, you're cool, Nod. Do we know what Dr. Solstarny looks like? Do we ever see like a picture of her or anything? And if so, is that her? Yes. I take a picture with my phone and I send it to Wayless. Tuttle can 
see her. Give me a stealth check, Mr. Mo. Me? Oh. Well, you walked in, right? Yeah, stealth. <laughs> I roll a nine for a ten. Nice. Nice job. That's it. That's it. Middle of the road. <laughs> How many rounds God. of sneak combat do I get before they, they notice me? <laughs> oh, <God>. <laughs> <laughs> oh you have at least three, three rounds of surprise here. You can just attack them, take them all out. Don't worry about it. You actually can give them a heart attack to death because they, because they're so surprised. <laughs> <laughs> I sneak up behind them and go, woo! She still doesn't notice you, and Tuttle believes this is Dr. Solstarny, even though you only see her from the back. Uh, I'm just looking around. That's all I'll stealth in here, too. Because it's a high ceiling. I'm looking up. I don't want that stupid thing with the, the tentacles attacking me. Ooh, Karoji's really getting there. Do, I, do I, I see they... anything with the perception check? I'm stealthing. Because <laughs> right, there's tentacle stealth. creatures up there. I know there are. I, I want to see your stealth there. Okay, there we go. Wow, 32. You even surprise Mo because Mo's yeah. like, "Oh my God!" I sneak behind Mo. Like, tick, 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 tick. No, Mo doesn't know. <laughs> Mo doesn't realize. I'm invisible. Do you make the little tinkling piano noise when you're moving? Yes. You you crawl between my legs and I don't realize it. Soul Starney is ceiling. still looking around, and then Does she, she appear to be armed. Uh, no, she looks up and sees you, and goes. We're here to rescue you. Come with us if you want to live. <laughs> Do you say that out loud? Yes. We're here with Ben Kenobi. She looks at you, and she immediately puts two of her fingers up to her mouth area, doing the shh gesture. Uh-oh. Okay. There goes your stealth. Can, can I see her do that from where I'm at? Yes. Okay, I want to do a sense mode of whether or not she's doing the there's danger, don't arouse it, or doing the Ghostbusters librarian. Oh, nice. Because that was our plan. That's what our plan was going to be. Slimer. Get her. Hold on, my sense motive. I'm having trouble finding, though I do get a double roll with it. Really? Yeah, it's the one of the base ones. All right, sorry, I get a D6. I don't actually get the double. Oh, that. I'm going to roll d20 and figure it out in a second. I rolled a two. 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 Oh, I, plus and you one. roll plus <laughs> one. I'm going to get at this point, even with my wow. charisma. It'll be about a ten. You think I'm, she's, I'm you think she's telling the truth. So the other thing is she uses her other arm. I found it for future reference. Then. <laughs> that was a little better, 19, but too late. She uses yeah, her other arm to point to the west. And other, so some of her hands look like she's going sh and points to the west. And I then, look to the west for perception. Yeah. She whispers, Are you real? We're as real as it's going to get. She's like, Okay, if you're a delusion, I'm going with it. And she decides to like come over to you. That's what we normally do. Your name is Sistarni, right? She shakes her head. She's like, Yes. But there's patrols. Let, let's get out of here. Wait, what kind of patrols? Like, What do we see to the west? Yeah, what's to the west? Hey, Tuttle. Rusty, get in here, you cowards. Yes, of course. That's as much as you can see to the west. There's some walls and obviously some uh, stuff that's going to the north. Well, we may not be able to leave right away because we, um, we have to do some investigative work, but we're really glad to have found you. She's like, yes, we we came from the university. Oh, is that where Mo know. goes? That's where Mo goes. Okay, hold on. All uh -oh. this, beep, 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 beep. All, this beep, beep, beep. all this chat. We came from the university. Doctor Mahali is the one who sent us to find you. Enough talk. Uh, as you head over towards the west, you see a well occultist. With Stealth a check. very, oh. very large machine gun, who was sort of resting against the pillar, and looks over and sees you and does alarm. Roll for combat. Oh, I have a machine gun. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, it's one of those things that have antenna. Oh, oh sorry, no. Roger. no. Hey. Tuttle is up first. Oh, okay. Um, 
Um, I'm going to follow. I'm I'm going to follow up uh, my plan of last time and push the button again. Okay, look at that. He's getting bold. He's making me do work here. Okay, push that button. John oh. Compton shamed me into it. He did. John Compton did shame you. 1d10. No, actually, it does seem like most of his stuff is buff, so, you know, pre-combat may not be the worst time to do this. Eight. Oh, my God. Here we go. You ready? Chest cannon. Cheddar gains a special weapon mount in which to is affixed a heavy weapon of your choice, except a grenade launcher or missile launcher, whose level is equal to or less than of the drone. It appears to be fully loaded. You also get the weapon specialization feat for that weapon. So out of his chest comes a heavy weapon. He's turning like into a transformer. So, nice. yeah. Figure that one out, which you're going to put in there. Cheddar! 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 Cheddar is up. Actually, it might be the Crocodile Dundee. That's not a machine gun. That's a machine gun. The yeah, there machine you go. gun is, is a level four, so that might be my best play here. Oh, my God. All right. Well, he can move because that's your standard. Actually, you still had a uh, move left. Actually, you could probably have a move and fire. Probably has two, around. two actions. Well, no, you did a standard. Cheddar. If, well, you don't, you don't know where the enemy is, where you are. Tuttle, you can't see it. So. Yeah, technically, I haven't seen him, so I can't really do anything. Theoretically, I can still give Cheddar a move, but yes, are you going to do that or no? Um, I'm at least going to move Cheddar in front of Doctor Solstarni. Okay, I'm going to put her on the board. Okay, so what you think is the Doctor is going, and she's like looking at this and ducks back into the temple from the open door and is getting out of Dodge. She's, she's leaving running. us? She's running away. She doesn't want to get killed. She's Yeah, she has no weapons. She's Don't run too far. Oh, we have she's weapons. a cowardly academic. I can, I can sympathize. There's, getting out of here is tricky. <laughs> I kind of hope we keep her around because she might be able to deal with the undead elf out front, is my hope. So, after the alarm is sent, one of these cultists runs from the front and sees Mr. Mo. And Do I have any cover? Yeah, you have tons of cover. Tons oh, and tons oh, of cover. Oh, good. That's and then I... this one appears to be carrying a, um, a scattered shotgun of some sort and looks at you and smiles and then runs away. Huh? What, what, what? That's so weird. Hiroji goes. Uh, you know what? These guys might be illusions. Because if she's seen things, and maybe these things are, uh, you know. That makes sense. Hiroji's up. All right, let me move. Oh, this would be... Oh, you've used your mirror image, haven't you? I can move there. Yeah. Pew, pew. Um, well... They haven't actually done anything aggressive. I, I try to parlay. I say, wait, don't attack. We just wish to just, to talk, to, to speak to you. We have no ill will towards Desna. I don't think these people are Desna worshippers. Can I make some kind of knowledge check? Are they wearing anything that I can, like any insignia yeah, yeah. or anything weird? Yeah. Yep. Yes, local. they're not elves. Knowledge okay. local. That's what I need to know. And they're my people. They yeah, yes, that's, that's a local. That's the problem. I get a bonus from military checks. I can check out their armor. I don't think it's their some knowledge local, right? It's um, culture. Culture. God damn Pathfinder messed me all up. Plus eight. I rolled a 12. 12. Yeah, Plus... these... Um, this one that you see is carrying a squad machine gun. Seems to have a lot of stuff. <laughs> this one is, seems to be like armed to the teeth. And it has a lot of the same death and dismemberment accoutrements as the creature you assassinated in the elf statue. So it looks like they're also worshippers of the cult of the devourer. Oh, right. Okay. The spoilers of Desna's Temple! Well, I did say let's parlay, and... Um... Well, yeah, but I would have think you would have seen that stuff first before you open your mouth. Well, 
Play it, play it I just out. find it he odd that the guy ran down out. there and didn't attack he you. Said yeah. it what are you going to say? What are you going to say? What are you going to say? I'm going to. I know. I already said that. I said what I said. I'm going to. I'm going to. If I still have a standard action left, I'm going to uh, uh, reserve it so that I will. I will fire on them if I'm fired upon. If our party is fired upon. Fair enough. You say that they're not going to answer you yet. Okay. So I will say that you're readying your act. Yeah, I'm readying an action exactly. Wayless is. You listen to the calm, you and you hear Walos humming to himself a ditty. Rusty is up. Rusty cannot see anything. Keep on keeping on, Walos. <laughs> Walos is just sort of, he's gotten into the groove. Uh, Rusty's way out of the way. So well, none of this you know. That way is a little judgmental. You are, you might as well be out of the temple. I don't even know where you are. Where, where are you even right. here? Are you on the battle map? Yeah. Where are you? So, as I understand it... We have decided not to attack the big boss we came here to kill. Is that correct? Uh, no, you don't know that. Um, yeah. It's is it is an is antenna decided, person yeah. who's in the Elven Temple, and that was we were getting fear from the person we came to rescue. I don't know. I'm sensing all of you not disagreeing with my assessment. Uh, I have no idea what you just said. We are totally. That didn't make any sense. To, to, to... Okay, we know the people who took Doctor Sistarni were actually a group of natives of this planet, and that the temple is actually for elves, not for the people who are natives of this planet. Therefore, and she was afraid of somebody to the west. We looked to the west, and it's one of the people who is not an elf, but is instead one of the inhabitants of this planet, logically the enemy. Yeah, but um, I like to ask questions first and then shoot. I have not experienced this with you in any game I've ever played. Yeah, realize you, yeah you just made that up. You just made that up, yeah. A few shows ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, that was clearly right. an enemy. Yeah. Okay. Well, this these people are, are probably working with her, so same criteria apply. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, it's just I found it really odd that I saw that guy run up to, to uh, uh, to Mo and then run away. That, that was odd. Oh, he, may be get, he may be getting reinforcements. Yeah. Or some other weapon okay, or something. Fine. Well, uh, I'd go for it, Rusty. Do you great. do you, Rusty? No, that's fine. That's great. You know what? No, we're doing you. I'm going to actually make a diplomacy check. First of all, you got to get. Yeah, I'm already on it. Fine, we're friendly. I, who have the only high diplomacy of all of us, am going to make a diplomacy check. I say, I greet you, fellow traveler in these parts, here to learn of many things like we are. I have a diplomacy of thirty-one. Good job. I'm supporting the plan, as stupid as it is. I'm just reminding you okay, that, that the, that's uh, your full they're brainwashed. Oh, I know. I moved and did an action. Mo is up. Okay, so if you guys remember, the this, this same guys, like, are, are they dressed like the same brainwashed death cultists that we killed at the statue? Yes. Okay. Give me a perception check, Mo. No, and he's hiding. I I, should... you, you, your perception stinks. I want to make sure you can see this. And it's kind of misty and muggy in here. Oh, uh, all right. Well, I get a bonus for any military type of. It's not military. It's cultist. It actually would be like more mythology. Mysticism. Well, I'm, I'm judging by. I'm judging. I'll give by you. Their I'll give you a small bonus. Let's see what you roll. Nine. It's it's. I'll plus give you enough of a bonus. Fine. Yeah, it looks like kind of like the crazy cultists you've seen before. They look similar. Okay, so I will show you guys how to negotiate with these. Oh my god, Mo! You have the momentum. I'm going to do that and whop him one. You can yeah. attack from there? Yeah, my pike. Rich. Oh my god, pike. You hit. Good job. Said enough talk. That is how you negotiate with these guys. I am done. Okay, she goes. She runs, runs, runs away. Oh, this is weird. To that there. provokes, unless she withdraws. No, she, she can no. get away. She can get away. Uh, Do I uh, see more, first of all? It's leaving a threatened square, though, right? Yeah. No. Well, you have reach. You can reach over that square. But can I... Does she have super cover, though? She has cover. You can't. Yeah, uh, she, you can't. Yeah. All right. Cover. You can't I don't know if that's a cover. pillar or if that's like it's a, just a, a dais. Yeah, is we it, don't know what a, it is. Sorry, that is a pillar, but she's still gonna go. What I she's still gonna do what I said she was gonna do. So you're not that bad. She runs there, and then she attacks you with her squad machine gun. Do I see more at least? Yep, she hits you with a seventeen twenty-eight. Does eleven points of damage, almost max, 
And you see All two right. more over there, and I'll give you some more viewing of what you can see. Sorry, that was the whole point she was behind that, was to... She was napping behind it, or leaning behind it, and then she saw you guys. Anyhow. Like, would, uh, if I were one square up to the northwest, would she have gotten cover still? Because I'm not yeah, you would really have to be two weapon. squares to the south to not have cover. She, by the way, responds to you after you say that and says, The darkness will devour us all! <laughs> mm-hmm. And runs away. Plan A. No. Who could have possibly seen that coming? I like to negotiate. Apparently, with terrorists. I, I'm. I don't. I, yeah, I don't know where this has come from. You never know. Hiroji's a wild card. He's he's yeah, a wild. He crazy. is a wild card. That, that yeah. is for sure. Okay. Well, I'm going to run out to where to there and drop prone, and then I'm going to have uh, Cheddar move up as well. Oh, what gun? What did you want to give her? Oh, right. Uh, the Cheddar. Yeah, Cheddar. Yeah, I was going to go with the squad machine gun. An excellent choice. So that is... Where did I see it? Can I even attack this turn? Okay, the squad machine gun has been added to Cheddar. Chomp, 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 chomp. It is all ready to go. So Tuttle has moved. He can see everything. They're all hiding up against the wall. You done, Tuttle? I take that that you're done. Cheddar is up. I'll have to actually get him into the fight next turn because there not enough movement for that. And I have a good firing angle. And your firing angle's terrible. Flip side is they got a terrible firing angle on him, too. So Yeah, so are you staying there or are you moving him again? Because you do have one more action, right? Well, but I don't want to move him up just to get him killed. That doesn't sound like a good okay. plan. Okay, uh, you know, I never know. Maybe you do. Uh, so Starney is out of action. You have no. She ran into the temple, and you have no idea what's going on. Cultists go. First cultist looks at Mr. Mo and fires. Actually, he does not. Sorry, I was wrong. Uh, what, Hiroji's they, up. They don't. They don't have weapons. Oh, they got weapons. They got shotguns. I think they got that's, shotguns. They're oh, waiting. That's there. weird. Mm-hmm. I, I kind of like the illusion theory more and more now. I can go there, and uh, and that gives me a little bit of cover, right? Uh, a little bit, yeah. And I will. Um, do my trick attack on this guy to the, the, the southernmost cultist. All right. Hiroji is the only one fooled by the uh, illusions. Yes, apparently. Mm, that fails. You roll and a one. Is, yes. That fails, as usual. All right, well, I will attack. Wow, what are the odds? He rolls a one again for an attack. Wow, he rolls one in four hundred. <laughs> That's annoying. All right, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... Well, it is a one in four hundred. He's right. I mean, <laughs> well, you know what? We've had a couple of double crits. Think of it as a double crit reversed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Think of it as getting them out of the way for the rest of these fights. That's it. They're done now. Yeah, you yeah, won't we'll roll ones anymore. I guarantee. I, I mean, if you roll it again, that would be a 1 in 8,000. <laughs> so it'll I never know. possibly happen. Waylos is not there. Get him out of there. Get him I off know. the board. Waylos is Waylos is humming to himself, and you hear a little ditty coming through. Yeah. And then he's like, oh, are, are, are you guys in a fight again? I, I hear I hear gunfire through the comms. Oh, we forgot to mention, we found Dr. Sistani. She's a very strange woman. Keep this channel clear. Rusty's up. Uh, I move to there as part of my move action. I pull out a uh, level two frag grenade and I throw it. At nice. Them. Awesome. What? No, you can't. Yep. Oh, oh wow. sure. Nope. Yeah. And uh, I'm also, of course, going to be doing my feint as part of my attack, but at the same time, first. Where are you trying to throw it? Because it is. To, to um, get all I think it's only, t- uh, it's only like a 20 foot range. Um, no, 50, to- 50, you can it, throw it straight north and get them all. You're saying 20 foot range? Oh, it is a 20 foot range. Yeah, it just means you'll get a minus, probably, right? Yes, the... you get a minus yeah. two. But it's easy to hit, though. There we go. That means I can now hit a square that gets all, all of them. I like that. All right, throw your grenade. Bingo. Attacking the ground. You only have one left, so that was your last one. No, that wasn't my frag one. I just used that roll. I have a frag two grenade. I also have a shock grenade level two. No, I know, but you have. Um... 
Sorry, I used the attack for frag grenade one. My apologies. Oh, no, I'm no, no, but I meant you... frag grenade two. No, no, no. I meant you only. This is your first and last frag grenade two that you used, so. Oh, I know. It's the only one. But look, this is the AoE. I so yeah, I was thinking hit. about that too. That's good. You hit. DC 14. Ah, oh, the, the right. two nothings miss. Hit hey, make it, but the big bad. Okay, and a whopping six damage. Six on points two of days. damage. Right. Yay. So three, three, and six. Well, I did 12 uh, damage. Average. That's that. Fine. Mediocre. Now my uh, feint against the boss, by which I mean the uh, visa, is my bluff attack. Uh, yeah, well, I'll add 22. D6 22. Sure. Well, wait, wait. D6. Oh, sorry. I should have only done one. Uh, no, that was wrong. Okay, so it's a 24. 24. It's 20 plus 1, 1 half through CR, correct? 15 plus. Oh, it's 15 plus. Oh, it's I keep messing that up with trick attack. All right, you believe she's flat-footed. Great, so the boss is flat-footed for all of you. Good. Thank you. That, that makes, makes it anything. fun. I did 12 damage and made the boss flat-footed. What was up? Stop. Oh, here come the shotgun blasts. Here comes the shotgun no, blasts. Oh, <laughs> no! They're readying their Smash actions. Smash Two-Face. I, I, I remember the scene in RoboCop. I, I, I sense this is it's coming. Rolls a seven and miss. Oh, for 12. Right, okay. It's not going to happen twice. Uh, well, hold First on. one to the south. Blasts you. Misses. The second one to the middle. Blasts you with their shotgun. And Miss. misses. Oh, wow. it's two, uh, a, 12 seven, and a, a 12 miss. and a 13. Because, uh, nice. damn, Moe's got some moves. Okay, now Mo can go and try to attack the big bad. Really? Give me that crit. Wow. There wow, you Mo. go. Wow. 29 damage. Rolls a crit. Mo could just solo this place. Well, um... You guys all have a plus one to your attacks. Because nice. And the flat-footedness. Engaged, uh... And it already took six, three oh, or six, yeah. so it's at over 30 damage now. Yeah. Did I do some damage to it yet? No, oh, no. no. You've done no damage to anything. Please don't throw a goblin grenade at it. I do have one in my left hand. No. Okay. This is what happens. You went up to this poor, poor creature... Who only wanted to annihilate you into darkness and death and decay. Really, what did she do to you? What, well, really. You blow her away. Sorry, you, you stab her away. Crit her for 29 points of damage. She is coughing out blood and appears to be on her last licks. And now it's her turn. She looks at you and says... From Hell's Heart, I stab at thee. God damn it! I hate you! I <laughs> swear to God I was going to say that. <laughs> yeah, pretty much right. God damn you. You Sorry. suck. <laughs> you took my life. On the other hand, Jason, kudos. I'm very proud of you. Think it's thunder. To Hell's Heart, I stab at thee and presses the button. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, 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 oh wait, yes. Wait, wait. Cheddar gets another <laughs> weapon? Uh, no, not quite. Hey, everybody. Steve here. So how about that for a cliffhanger? Obviously, something really bad is going to happen. And for those of you who know the Dead Sun's Adventure Path and know what that button does, I'll give you a little bit of spoiler for next week. All I'm going to say is that every single person and bad guy is in the area of effect. It's going to be nasty next week. So for this week's PCGM tip, it's a real simple one. It is how to make PCs shine. Now this is going to be so simple. It might only take me a few minutes, maybe even a few seconds to talk about it. It's really this simple. Here we go. When your PCs, when they suggest things, when they make some notes or they start talking about what the reason a bad guy might be doing something or the reason why certain things are the way they are in the world, take some notes and then later on use what they said and make it true. Seriously, that's it. 
That's all you need to do. It makes the PCs feel awesome. It makes it feel like that they're affecting the world and that they figured everything out. I even do this in Venture Paths all the time. That way they feel like that they are really affecting the world because you know the big problem with, well, GMing in general is that you guys can come up with a huge world and a huge backstory and unless the PCs do exactly what you want them to do they're not going to see any of it. I had a GM, I keep talking about him, Seth. This is the mysterious Seth which I'll have on the show one day but he was our GM before I started the GM actively all the time and he would write pages and pages we're talking about like 200 page stories and backgrounds of the world and then he would also kill us within like two sessions and then he'd be angry because he didn't get to tell his stories and well he was kind of a killer gm but that's a perfect example like if you want these stories to be told then make the pcs sort of lead the way and then integrate your stories into what the pcs want it works really well. It makes the PCs feel awesome. It makes them feel like what they say is actually what's going on. It also is great for like murder mysteries or anything to do with mysteries because it feels like they figured it out. I've said this tip before and I'll say it again. It's like whenever you have a murder mystery, don't write the ending. Just write the beginning and the middle and then have the PCs figure out the end and then make that the end. And then voila, they figured it out. But that's it. It's a very simple tip. Whenever the PCs say something, now I wouldn't be so obvious about it saying, oh, the PCs say A, B, and C, and then A, B, and C become true. If anything, if they say something, make some notes on it, keep track of it, keep aware of it for the future, and then figure out a way to sort of insert it into the story later. And I did that, for example, I'll give you an example, is that it felt like it this is way back in the beginning of the adventure. It felt like everyone was kind of getting cool stuff, but it felt like Hiroji was getting left out. So we gave him the goblin grenades, and obviously those came in pretty handy, and he's had a lot of fun with those. I completely just made those up, and they're similar to Cheddar had the cool half goblin, half Cheddar, and Rusty, he's... Well, I don't know what he is. He's kind of sort of undead, but it's kind of cool because he has some neato powers because of that. Mo just got, well, he got a lot of food and he was pretty happy with that. But it felt like Hiroji was kind of left out. So I just added some new stuff and I gave it to him. And look at it now. It's like, what, 30 sessions after he got those goblin grenades? And now they're memorable. And we will never, ever forget about him healing the bad guys from last week. So that's what I meant by, you know, sort of just keep giving your guys a little bit of the spotlight and then let them decide what they want and you know Chris was really warming up to the goblins and he was really enjoying them so I made something so he could remember them by and it was sort of like a little fond memory he had of the goblins forever and that's kind of what I mean I strongly recommend you do this in all of your games it'll make the PCs happy it makes your life easy and it keeps your players engaged so once again, next week is the week. Oh my god, there's so much going on. Pathfinder Playtest is released. It's free for everyone August 2nd. There's going to be a billion reviews. You're going to get to read the book. You're going to get to see the adventures. There's going to be the new Beastry that comes out. There's just so much stuff that's going to come out. And then obviously new Starfinder stuff's probably going to be announced. And the new Adventure Path comes out, which I'm all excited about to see. And then oh, there's Gen Con next week. It's just, oh my god, it's just too much going on. So once again, I will be at Gen Con. I think I might be the only one from Roll for Combat making it this year. Again, we kind of all went to PaizoCon, and it's a little difficult for some people to take off in August, but I go every year no matter what. I will actually be coming in Wednesday and leaving Monday, so I will be there and just hanging around. I will be wearing my Roll for Combat t-shirt, so if you see me, come by and say hi. I will also be GMing all the specials, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday night, levels 1 and 2 for each of those, if you want to sign up or find me. In addition, there's a meet and greet Sunday from 2 to 3. I'm going to be bringing t-shirts and anyone who shows up will get a t-shirt. But I'll be honest, if you just see me walking around, I'm going to carry them with me and I'll just give you a t-shirt. So if you see me, just say hi and you'll get a free t-shirt. I carry lots of them, different sizes, different styles, different colors. You will not be disappointed. And also don't forget next week, we're going to have a detailed review of the Pathfinder playtest going up on the website on August 2nd. Do check that out. Written by Jason. It is not going to disappoint. And finally, some quick show notes. Don't forget, every Tuesday, new podcast. 
Please subscribe to us on iTunes and Android, and please, please review us both on Stitcher and on iTunes. I'm very happy a lot of people have been reviewing us on iTunes, but if you can, also go to the Starfinder Society podcast. That is a separate feed. If you look for it, just search in iTunes or Stitcher and do a review there if you can. So far, the reviews have been really good. We need a few more before they officially recognize the reviews and give us a star rating. So if you could please go there, I would mean a lot to me. Also, do check out the Discord channel. We're actually signing up for people to play the new Pathfinder playtest, both a combination of live games and play-by-post. Just go to discord.rollforcombat.com. And with that, I will see and talk to you guys next week. See ya. You've been listening to Roll for Combat, a Starfinder actual play podcast. If you have a question or comment for the show, please visit us at rollforcombat.com. Or drop us a line at contact at rollforcombat.com. You can also find us on Twitter, Facebook, Discord, and other social media platforms. been listening to Roll for Combat. Until next week, always remember Toddle's motto, did a toddler design these controls? <laughs>